The major concern about healthcare worker exposure is the toxicities that we might get from hazardous drugs. There's been information in the literature, in the medical literature, since the 1970s. There's been recognition by agencies such as OSHA from the 80s, and even more information from NIOSH and other CDC issues since then. So we know there's toxicities. We need to make sure that those toxicities, which again, largely are carcinogens or reproductive toxins, they could be affecting healthcare workers, and that's what we want to prevent. Anyone in a hospital could be exposed to hazardous drug who's a worker who might be handling them. So we have to remember this is not about compounding or even just compounding and administering. It's about the transit of a hazardous drug throughout your entire organization. So think of how it works in your organization. How does the drug get there? whether it's a loading dock or delivered to the pharmacy or delivered to a clinic. How does it get transported? Where is it stored? How is it compounded? How does it get from the point it's compounded to where it's going to be administered to a patient? What happens after nursing administers them? And then what happens in a spill? For example, if environmental services is needed, those folks could be contaminated potentially with hazardous drugs as well. So the whole transit of hazardous drugs through an organization needs to be addressed. Largely, the way we get exposed as healthcare workers is by touch contamination. It also could be aerosolization. So if we see a drug in a powdered form, for example, whether it's supposed to be a powder or whether it's broken, we can inhale that and that would be an issue. There's also areas where we could ingest it and you might say, ingest a hazardous drug, why would I do that? But if people have touched a surface that might be in a break room, for example, and then someone goes in to eat their lunch there, that's a way that that could get ingested. The other way it is by injection, and that would be inadvertent. You know, you get a needle stick, for example, of one of the drugs that are on the list. But largely, the biggest risk that we have is touch contamination. NIOSH puts together a really interesting hierarchy of control, and they use this to approach and mitigate risk in any industry, not just ours, not just healthcare, not just pharmacy, not just related to hazardous drugs. They look at five steps in taking risk away. So the best thing to do would be to eliminate the risk if you can. Well, we have to take care of patients, so largely that's off the table for us. The second most important way to take it away is to substitute something less risky. Maybe you get a new drug or dosage form that's safer than older ones. Maybe you get a new device. Maybe you get something else that protects that. But again, largely that's off the table for us. So our controls come down to three things that NIOSH talks about. Facilities, where do we do this? And do we have the proper facilities in which to do it? And in our case, it might be an IV hood, a biological safety cabinet, for example, and a negative pressure room. We also need administrative controls because we can have all the greatest things there, but if people aren't using them or aren't using them correctly, then we, it's not working. It's not mitigating that risk. And then the other thing that's very important is the personal protective equipment. We need to make sure that people are using the right PPE, personal protective equipment, to mitigate the risks that they might be exposed to. The hierarchy of controls from NIOSH really fits right into 800. And as 800 was being designed, the group that put it together and subsequently approved it really took a look at that hierarchy of risk to identify what steps could be put in that standard to make sure that it was appropriately taking steps to protect people and protect healthcare workers from contamination.